this episode pretty much starts with baby caterpillars. These babies are just one day old. Can you believe that? The first instars of Rodstelia moths are usually very easy to raise. You can just put them in little plastic boxes and add some leaves. They love privet or ligustrum, hedera helix or ivy, liquid umber or sweetgum, prunus or cherry and a multitude of other plants. I've raised a lot of Rothschildia species on my channel so far and all of them seem somewhat easy. The first instars of most Rothschildia species seem to hang out in small groups and feed communally. If you are a long time viewer of my channel you've seen me raise several Rothschildia species before and most of them do the same thing. The trick to raising them is to keep them humid and clean. Rothschildia is a very interesting genus of silk moss and I plan to raise as many of them as I can. Rothschildia are chiefly neotropical species characterized by large more or less triangular translucent spots on all four wings. And they are a distant relative of other Saturnidae species such as Atlas moths, Robin moths and Samia moths. Despite being mainly neotropical, there is also temperate species of Rothschildia moths even found up to northern Mexico and the United States, such as Rothschildia cincta. The taxonomy of the genus Rothschildia is complicated at the moment, but there are over 40 species of them the last time I checked. As the larvae grow bigger, they develop a wonderfully bright aposematic color pattern. They have bright orange and white patches and black melanic stripes. This moth is definitely in the top 10 for most pretty caterpillars I have raised so far. Whoa! Just look at the colors. Seeing these caterpillars definitely inspires me and it makes me wonder about the many species of moths in this world that barely get any attention from anyone at all. This is the reason I started this channel to be honest. Insects and their life cycles are some of the most important animals on our planet but they receive the least attention, much to my great sadness. And my mission is to inspire more people with them and show them they can be fun, complex and very important. If my channel grows bigger, one of my ambitions is go to various tropical countries and show you the rarest species of moths and butterflies from those localities, including their life cycles. Imagine that, a YouTube channel showing the most awesome life cycles of butterflies and moths in the world. That is my mission to be honest. And I hope it will inspire more people to care about these forgotten animals and encourage people to protect and study them. Another one of my ambitions is to become a completely independent biologist through YouTube and conduct research on moth species in different countries. If you have any basic experience with breeding Rothschildia moths, then these guys are not difficult to breed. So, they do take a little bit longer to grow than most Rothschildia species. But other than that, they are really uh, easy. Do you want to breed this species too? Then there is good news and there is bad news. The bad news is that this species comes from countries where it is very hard to get a permit from in regards to importing live animals legally. And that makes them hard to get in captivity. The funny thing is this species is actually common where it comes from in the wild. Uh, it is by no means a rare species. 
it's just that the countries where it happens to live are not countries where it is easy to get live animals from. And that makes it in captivity somewhat of a rare and expensive animal to breed. The good news is it is really easy to breed in my opinion. If you've, if you've bred any species of Rosilia before, then you will have no problem raising these guys. Uh, I think a beginner can breed this species if they have the cash to buy them since they, the eggs and the cocoons can be expensive in the market but uh, otherwise as you can see I didn't have any problems uh, to me it seems a very easy species like most Rothschildia moths so uh, yeah it's just that obtaining them can be hard they are not that commonly bred and they require difficult to get permits if you have good entomological contacts like I do then uh, perhaps you can find a person to send you eggs or cocoons but uh, the breeding part is actually the easiest the hardest is obtaining them the good news is if you live uh, in South America somewhere where these insects are native maybe you can find them in the wild uh, all you need to do is find a female, collect some eggs and you can start some few generations of this beauty take a look, it's so amazing after a while the caterpillars started spinning cocoons in their typical Rothschildia fashion Rothschildia moths often suspend their cocoons horizontally against a branch attaching it with a silk pad Before you know, I ended up with many cocoons. Can you see them? That's a lot. The cocoons of this species are easily incubated at room temperature. The pupa of Rothschildia ericina will hatch in 2 to 6 months time. But they do have a slight ability to diapause in some occasions, which will test your patience. And now, after all this time, the big reveal!
So sadly these moths have no functional mouth parts, which basically means that they starve over time, which explains why they only live for about a week or two. The lifespan is 7 to 13 days, but in captivity they can be paired easily, after which the female produces a whole lot of eggs. Oh my god, these moths are just amazing. I have seen a lot of moths in my 27 year long life, but this one cuts the cake for sure. Wait, is that even a legit expression? Cut the cake? I don't care, this one does cut the cake and now I declare it an official expression. When I see beautiful animals like these, it seriously makes me question the fact humanity seems to care so little for the lost beauty and diversity of nature that we are working so hard to destroy right now every day, sadly. Rostelia ericina is a species of silk moth, Saturnidae, reportedly found in South and Central America, divided into several subspecies. Ericina ericina, the nomino typical subspecies from Venezuela, Trinidad, Guyana, Suriname, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. But there is also Rostelia ericina luciana from Saint Lucia Island. Rostilia ericina mexicana from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, Nicaragua. And most remarkable features of this species are the highly conspicuous larvae that are decorated with bright neon orange stripes, contrasting with their white greenish hue and black dark lines. This silk moth reportedly produces two to three generations per year being a somewhat continuously brooded species, although in localities with stronger dry seasons, cocoons may undergo a short diapause. Males are frequently taken at lights in near tropical rainforests with also wet savanna habitats. Males are considerably smaller than the females. The moths do not feed and have a lifespan of 7 to 14 days. A lifespan long enough to find a partner, pair, lay eggs and die. Females have more rounded and curved wings and a larger wing surface area, while the wings of the males are rather elongated and thin. Although this moth is common in the wild and also easy to breed, it is not often kept in captivity, unfortunately. Oh my gosh! Do you guys ever see a moth and get this warm happy feeling in your stomach? I do! And this species gives me that warm, happy feeling. Just look at those. Rostilia ericina. What an amazing piece of art they are. These are two females. I think you saw the male before. Wow. And we raised them together on YouTube. Let me ask you, do you know any other YouTube channel? that has moth videos with species like these? The answer is no, because that's not possible. If you want to see the coolest moths in the world, you have to follow my channel. It's true, I'm sorry. Just look at that. What's really cool is that Rostelia moths have these um, transparent borders in their wings, can you see it? If you watch very closely, you will see that they assume the color of the background. They're a bit shiny and reflective, but also transparent. And what's funny is this is a medium-sized Rostelia, but it seems these moths have a lot of, uh, of size, size difference per each individual insect, which is normal. Most Saturnids vary a lot in size per uh, individual, because no two animals are the same. But it seems these two vary more in size than the average Rothschildia that I've raised. Nonetheless, my god. Wow. Super incredible. One thing I always wanted is to see this by pieces in the wild too. Maybe if my channel grows big enough someday I'll go to French Guiana someday and film them in the wild, because uh, I know some places where these are actually common in the wild. Just look at those. So how do we pair them? Because we have the moths now, right? That's pretty cool. But we want to have babies too. Well, let me show you how that goes. 
I paired mine in summer. Usually when the night temperatures are above 20 degrees Celsius, they seem to pair relatively easily. They seem to enjoy the warmth. After a night has passed, you can usually get out in the morning and notice the insects have already paired. After pairing, the female will lay 50 to 100 eggs in some occasions. Alright friends, there's some good news. Last night we had a natural pairing. Do you see this cage here with moths inside them? Those are my Erisina and I left them in my garden tonight in the cage. And they pair themselves. This is good news. The thing with hand pairing is that it can reduce fertility of the moths. If you manually pair them by hand, a smaller percentage of eggs may hatch than if they voluntarily pair, as they are doing right now. However, this is great news to me. It means this female is going to lay a lot of eggs and all of them could be fertile. These eggs can be collected in a petri dish. Be careful not to spill any of them. If the female has paired, she will generously lay larger amounts of eggs. Ah yes, the moth keeper's dream. Moth eggs in large numbers. Yay! These eggs are easily incubated on room temperature. Eggs wanted! Are you a moth trapper that finds females of Ericina in the wild at light? Currently I am hoping to investigate the morphology of the caterpillars from various locations, especially considering many subspecies of Ericina have been described. Ideally I want to breed all the subspecies from various geographical locations. Contact me please if you can breed these and are willing to sell um, eggs to me or send them to Europe that I can use for my various research purposes. Oh my god, after two weeks on room temperature I can see babies hatching and I am so so incredibly excited for this moment because I just love to show you this amazing incredible species guys. This is going to be huge. I love it. I love it. I would like to thank everybody who came here to watch my video today. It was a short one because I don't want to make all my videos as extremely long as they do in some occasions. I found there is a, difference, a different audience for shorter and a different audience for longer videos and today I decided to make this species a short one. A reminder that my channel is as of today completely demonetized and not supported by YouTube. This channel runs on donations from crowdfunding. Please consider becoming a supporter and send me a donation through PayPal or Patreon if you are willing and able to. Thank you and even if you are not able to, I appreciate the fact you are here to watch my video today about insects and I hope to see you next upload. Bye bye!
Oh, 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 oh,